Hello. I'm getting situated. This dumb shirt. I keep sitting on it. Okay, so I'm back from my meeting. <clears throat> okay. So. That's where you're at. That's the last thing that you have in your notes. Yes, the HJ stuff. Okay. <sighs> They kind of like running around, so I'm kind of like, okay, Jews. Remember what Hitler's trying to do. He's trying to create an all German only empire, right? Okay, so if he's going to create an all German only empire, what about all of the non Germans? Where are they going to go? They got to go somewhere. So. When he takes over in 1933, okay, first thing that happens is the Nuremberg Laws. I showed you pictures of Nuremberg, whenever. Um, the Nuremberg Laws, it's a series of laws. It's not just one law, all right? And this series of laws, they're passed slowly. Guys, we talked about this whenever we talked about the Napoleonic Code, when Napoleon took people's rights away from them. You can't just take, wait, you can't just take all the rights, there we go, away from everybody. I was about to say that like in a weird way. You can't just take all rights away from everybody all at once, or people will freak out and people will notice. Okay, so um, Tyrant 101, you got to start slow. <clears throat> you need to start, you need to start slow and you need to do like just a little at a time and build. Okay, so like some of the early Nuremberg laws were like curfews. Okay, um, we need to, you know, watch out for our foreign population because some people are mad at them. Some people think that all of the problems in Germany, it's their fault. Well, I wonder why, Hitler. Um, but if we put a curfew on them, we can keep them safe. Crap like that. Um, later, there will be curfews on foreign businesses. Um, businesses that aren't owned by a German have to be, I feel like this stuff is all kinds of screwed up. Okay, anyway, businesses that are owned by foreigners or even a German, but like not German by heritage, um, have to close earlier or whatever. All right. Eventually, we get to the laws that you guys have heard of, where the Jews and other groups are wearing patches or whatever to designate who they are. The Jews, the most famous group, they're wearing the what is it, the yellow star of David. If you don't know, you'll see pictures in a minute. I, I think most of you know this stuff, um, but if not, you'll see pictures in a minute. Eventually, we're going to start putting those Jews in ghettos. We're going to start separating them from the rest of the population. Okay? But you can't do that first. Hitler does this slowly. Until we build up to 1938. It's five years after he took over, okay? 1938. It's this thing called, look at that word. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought I had it highlighted. Sorry. Look at that word. Kristallnacht. Again, that CH. Kids are always like, Nacht. No. Kristallnacht. Um, Nacht is night, okay? Es ist nicht Nacht, Nacht. It's not night. Nacht. Crystal. It's glass, but it's like, if I take a glass and I like cram it on the ground and it breaks into all these little pieces. Broken. Shattered. This translates to the night of broken glass. Okay, 
basically what happens is across Germany and several of the bigger cities, <clears throat> I don't know if smaller cities did it. I just don't know. But especially the bigger cities. Hey, Jack. Um, the dog is down here licking my foot. Okay, thank you, Jack. Um, anyway, <clears throat> what ends up happening is a lot of Nazis get together and decide, okay, we want these Jews gone. Get out. They start destroying their stores. It's called broken glass because one of the things was to like throw rocks and bricks into the windows. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then of course looting occurred. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. <coughs> sorry. And then of course looting occurred. Um, and then some of the synagogues were set on fire, um, synagogue church, basically, their temples were set on fire. Night of broken glass is just this like <clears throat> widespread attack on Jewish buildings and stuff. Come on, Jack, come on. He wants up, but I can't reach him. I forgot to tell you this. This was before the Night of Broken Glass. Um, eventually, they are going to start labeling. Okay. They are going to start labeling Jews. When you see that, J U D, and there's an E here, Jude. Jude. It means Jew. <clears throat> This is some of the aftermath of the night of broken glass. You have Jewish stores and whatever was in the storefront has been taken. As we look at this picture, we, we see here, okay, like, oh, I'm pointing at it with my hands. I'm sorry. Um, we see here, you know, it's all been broken, right? Stuff here in the storefront has been taken, but more importantly than that, I want you to notice the Germans as they look in. I mean, this one is hard to tell, but maybe a little bit of concern, I don't know. But look right here. He's laughing. I don't know. I mean, I don't think it's funny to steal. I don't think it's funny to loot and destroy people's stuff. Where have we seen that before? Look back here. All this racist crap right here started with a little seed of hate. Remember, we talked about anti Semitism like in September last year. Last year, just kidding, last semester. <clears throat> it was in one of our first units, um, second unit Europe, Africa, and the Americas. The Jewish diaspora, they've been roaming and roaming around. That's where this starts, you guys. A little tiny bitty seed of hate. And it just builds and builds and builds and eventually turns into this. And eventually turns into, oh, I don't know, a Holocaust. That's so sad. I love this picture. Let's look at it, let's analyze it. Because there's something very particular about this picture that I just, oh, okay, look. Down here, <clears throat> you see broken glass from the windows, right? All these storefronts. It's hard to tell if things have been looted. It looks like maybe this one, there's been some stuff, but it's hard to tell because we can't really see them well, okay? Um, two huge things here. The first one is right here, this young man. Look at his face. Look at that. He obviously works in this store somewhere. Look. 
go as big as I can. <clears throat> Look at his face. You just see like, why? On his face. And then look at this. Do you, do you see it? What the crap is this guy doing? And they're just watching. They're not doing a darn thing. What do you think this guy's doing? The, those ladies are just <clears throat> watching. I mean, this one almost smiling. Right behind this young Jewish boy who's looking at this mess going, I have a mess to clean up. Where do I even start? Yo, he's looting. He's stealing. You're like, no, he's just putting something back. You gotta be careful. That one little tiny seed of hate gets in there. Uh oh, I can't move it. Oh, there it is. I was like, where did it go? <laughs> there he is. This right here is a picture of some of the buildings and synagogues um, being set on fire also. Now, after Kristallnacht, a whole lot of Jews were like, okay, it's time to go. Like, first we have to wear the star. Then we had to like, Ugh, it's time to go. We get it, okay? Let's go. See, the problem is, bless their hearts, a lot of them are going to go to just neighboring countries. I mean, of course, a lot came to America, um, like 100,000-ish came to America. Um, a couple hundred thousand um, made their way into like, South American countries, but the majority of them came here. The Netherlands, Belgium, France, Austria, Czechoslovakia, and Poland, around Germany. Their situation didn't really get better because Germany is about to own most of that. In fact, all of that. So um, it's really sad. They do leave, but Germany is going to own all that. And of course, Hitler wants to get rid of anybody that isn't German. So nothing really was made better in that situation for them. That being said, um, I feel like this is like tilted weird. Okay. Um, this is the map that I will use. Just like with the World War I map, by the end of it, it's going to be like all ugly and colored and crazy. Um, but Germany is here in green with Berlin ish kind of sort of where the city is. Okay. And then Italy is also in green. Hitler does have an alliance. It's called the Axis Alliance with, um, Japan, sorry, and Italy, but understand Hitler doesn't make this alliance because they're all friends. Hitler makes this alliance because they're fascist governments and they all kind of want the same thing, empire building. It's called the Axis. Dang, I didn't include a picture. Hmm. It's called the Axis because, let me show you. Gotta find it, gotta find it, gotta find it. Where's that picture? Oh, here it is. This is what I wanted. 
it's called the axis because whenever you're looking at like um, latitude lines, okay, Germany and Italy are here. Well, if you go straight across, well, look at there. Japan, you're like, uh-uh, Japan is down here. Yeah, but it's in between these two axes, these two latitude lines. That's where you get the name, the axis powers. Um, and again, here's, here's what they want. Japan wants to set up an empire right here. Is that gonna affect Hitler's empire? No, he wants Russia. Hitler wants an empire here. So he'll be north of Japan. Now, Mussolini, I don't think I told you what Mussolini wanted. Mussolini wants to like recreate old Rome. Rome, you didn't learn Rome in this AP modern class, but the Roman empire, does this, it goes around the Mediterranean. Now, is that gonna be in Hitler's way? If Hitler stays north, no. Mussolini could have this down here. Do you trust Hitler? Okay, so that's why they end up being called the Axis powers, okay? <clears throat> All right, so this is the map we will use. And I colored, where did my arrow go? Okay, I colored in Germany for you. So you can see, okay? So there's Germany. Do you notice anything? I didn't make a mistake. Are you looking? Look at the map. Border of Germany. Border of Germany. Border of Germany. I didn't make a mistake. Adolf Hitler is going to start getting aggressive before World War II ever actually starts. Okay some aggression. Um, early on, Hitler puts troops in the, look right here, Rhineland. Um, the Rhine is a river, okay? It's the main river that comes like down this way. Well, it actually kind of comes this way, but that's okay. Um, the Rhine River is amazing farmland. Well, some of the best area right here in the Rhineland was given to France after World War One. Uh, right now, who cares? Because it's kind of all trenched out and messed up and ugh, poison gas. Um, but yay, France, you got some land, yeah? Um, yeah. It used to be German, so Hitler wants it back. He puts troops here. Troops. Tanks and crap. Okay, if Canada, who is our friend, suddenly put tanks in Washington state, would we freak out a little bit? Get your tanks out of our country. It puts them in a really good place to invade us. France throws a fit. France goes, prime minister, I can't think of the word, France goes to the Prime Minister of England, Great Britain. Hitler just put troops in our country. Tanks and stuff. What the heck is this? The Prime Minister says, I'll go talk to him. Okay, you guys. The Prime Minister at this point, I know I don't have a picture of him. Here he is. Is Neville Chamberlain. Um, you've heard of Winston Churchill, probably. And if we've actually had class this year, um, he is that big, giant old man standing in the corner of my room staring at you. Yeah, that big, giant cardboard cutout. Yeah, he's not in charge yet. He's not the prime minister yet. At first, the prime minister of England is this guy, Neville Chamberlain. Um, Neville Chamberlain 
Well, looky here. This is what I was looking for. Neville Chamberlain. Neville Chamberlain. Neville Chamberlain. Okay, listen. Neville Chamberlain doesn't think Hitler's going to do anything. He's not worried about Hitler. He doesn't think he's going to attack anybody. He doesn't think he's going to do anything. He does go and talk to Hitler. And he's like, dude, what are you doing? They had tea together. I... Hitler says, okay, we're cleaning up our country after World War I. And I just needed a place to keep some of these tanks and stuff. This area, the Rhineland, France isn't actually using it. Nobody's there. It's all trenched out. It's all disgusting. We just are, you know, like you clean your room, right? And you move everything off of your bed so that you can make your bed. Or you, I don't know, whatever. You move everything and then you put it back. I just move the tanks for a little bit. We'll clean up over here and then we'll just bring those tanks back. It's no big deal. They're freaking out for no reason. Why do they have tanks? Neville Chamberlain's like, um, okay, but, but you have tanks, Hitler. And the Treaty of Versailles says you can't. Oh, well, about that, Ch Chamberlain. Okay, look, I wasn't in charge when the Treaty of Versailles was signed. You weren't in charge of England when the Treaty of Versailles was signed. Do you really think it's unfair? I mean, we don't have any tanks. We should get to have tanks to defend ourselves. Chamberlain, you have to understand that. I, I do, actually, Hitler. So listen, I won't worry about that. And I will let you keep your, your tanks here while you clean up and stuff. It's okay. As long as that's all. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm a nice guy. Okay, listen. This is called appeasement. Um, you appease people every single day. <clears throat> you don't want to do your vocab, but I'm like, do your vocab. And you're like, oh, okay. You didn't do it because you wanted to. You did it because I, oh. Your mom says, take out the trash. Okay, take out the trash. Okay, take out the, okay. And you get up and you take out the trash and you stop the whole way. You didn't want to take out the trash. You did it because you had to. Okay, listen, you appease people every day. You get in the car to go to lunch with all your friends and they're like, hey, we're going to Rosa's for the 10th time this week. And you're like, Oh my gosh, really? But you go because all your friends are going. Appeasing is giving in to someone's demands, giving in to them when you really don't want to, but you do. I appease you every day by not ripping your phone out of your hand and smashing it on the ground. Just kidding. Um, guys, appeasement is just the nature of being a human, except in this situation, should Chamberlain have appeased Hitler? I mean, you can argue both ways. You can argue, well, Chamberlain really didn't know what was coming. Yeah, but I mean, Hitler has a book. You can also argue the other way. No, he should not have appeased him. Chamberlain should have kicked his butt right then. Yeah, but it's the middle of the Great Depression. So, I mean, you can argue either side. Total opinion, should he have done it or not? I don't know. He did. The problem with appeasement is this. When you're on your phone in class, and I ignore it, what it tells you 
is that it's okay. When he ignores what Hitler's doing and says, okay, don't worry about it. What it tells Hitler is, oh, okay, you're not gonna do anything to stop me. So I can do more. And Hitler does. See if you notice something new. So this is now Germany, even though technically like they don't own it, but I mean, you got your stuff there. Okay. Ready? Oh, shoot. Uh, where did Austria go? Yeah, it's Germany now. Okay, look. My hair is driving me crazy. Okay, this right here was Germany. I think it's 1938. They take Austria. Is it 38 or 36? Did I put it in here? 38. Okay. Um, here we go. Oops. Here we go. Okay, look. Hitler had just uh, anger toward Austria for surrendering during World War I. Most Germans did. They felt like it was just disgusting and despicable and so cowardly. Hitler goes into, um, what is it called, Austria, and says, okay, you're German now. The Austrian government's like, uh, no. And Hitler says, yep. I have an annexation paper. Sign it. Or I'll kill you. What's an annexation paper? Because technically, if you look, well, Hitler didn't take over Austria. Austria was annexed into Germany. True. What does that mean? Texas was annexed into the United States. You ask, can I be a part of your country? They vote on it, and then they annex you in. Oh my gosh, look at my bruise. Ooh. I got bit by a dog last night. I bet that's what that is. Yes, one of my dogs. Yes, he was mad. <gasps> I can't believe that bruise. Oh, demon dog. Just kidding, I love my dogs. Okay, even if they bite me. Okay, so anyway, what am I talking about? Annexing Austria. Okay, so anyway, um, they kind of pull a John here, King John with the Magna Carta. They give them annexation papers and they say, you're about to be annexed into Germany. Sign it. Or, you know, there's the military. Does Austria have a choice? Yes, they do. Okay, of course they do. Um, but do they have a choice? Not if they don't, like, I mean, if they don't want to go to war, they don't. Austria signs the annexation papers. So yes, technically Austria was annexed into Germany, but they were forced. Of course, everybody freaks, them out, freaks out. Oh my gosh, Hitler took over. Well, guess what happens? Nothing. Hitler. Why did you do that? We annexed them. Look, right there. Right there. It says right there. They signed it. They wanted to be part of us. They're German. Shouldn't all Germanic people be under one flag? I mean, Prime Minister Chamberlain, aren't all British people under one flag. Sometimes it's really annoying how smart Hitler is. He's a pain in the butt. They keep Austria. And Chamberlain says, okay, but that's it. Like there's nothing else that you're gonna do, right? Well, 
Chamberlain, there, see, there is this place. Right here, somewhere up here. It used to be part of Germany and now it's part of Czechoslovakia. But see, here's the thing. Nobody there is Czech or Slovak or Romani or Slav or whatever. They're all German and they want to be under the German flag. Guys, that's true. They did. It's called the Sudetenland. It's up here. Let me show you the word. It's right here. Sudetenland. The Sudetenland. It was part of Germany before World War One. It was given to, well, not given to, um, the area of land was taken from Germany and used to create Czechoslovakia, a piece of it. It is full of mostly Germans. They did want out of Czechoslovakia and into Germany. Chamberlain says, all right, I'll give it to you. Except that's really too big. I colored it too big, but that's okay. I'll give it to you. Except Hitler, nothing else, okay? Like France, I mean, there are some countries that are starting to freak out. Nothing else. Oh, no, nothing else. I wouldn't dream of it. Hitler is pushed and pushed and pushed. If I let you play on your phone here, then you're going to play on your phone here. And then you're going to play on your phone here until you know I'm not going to say anything. Guys, you can't constantly appease people when they're pushing and pushing and pushing and Chamberlain is appeasing like crazy. And then check this out. Wait, huh? Six months, six weeks, I don't remember. Did I put it in there? It's six something, six months. Six months later, Hitler takes the military into Czechoslovakia and takes the whole thing over. Now this is military. Guys, technically World War II hasn't even started yet, but Hitler takes the military and is like, yep, you're mine now. And the Czechoslovakian government is too weak. And they're like, okay, all right. We can't fight you. It's the great depression, man. We don't even have a standing military right now. Okay, I guess we're German. Everybody notices and Chamberlain's like, ah, but nobody does anything. It's a good thing we have a new, what's it called? Vote for prime minister in England. It's time to vote for your new prime minister. Chamberlain is ousted. People are like, they don't like his policies. He's too soft. Blech. Get out. So somebody new has been brought in, Mr. Winston Churchill. Uh, again, Winston Churchill is that big giant cardboard thing in the corner of my room, that big giant guy, that old guy that stares at you all the time. Oh, there he is. The heck? Um, there he is. Short little guy. Kind of butterbully kind of guy. Cute little guy. Total drunkard, but you know, that's okay. Can't have him perfect all the time. He's a weird fellow. Oh, that's the show. Oh, I love this picture. Look at him. He's such a cute little guy. Look at him as a kid. Like old sailor. 
There he is. Okay. So Winston Churchill, look at him. Uh, he's now prime minister and he's not playing with Hitler. He is not going to appease Hitler at all. He goes to Hitler and he's like, bro, look, I ain't playing. You take over one more thing and it's war. Hitler's pushed as far as he can push and guys, he knows it. What Hitler does next, like, like not what he does next, not what I'm about to talk about, but when he actually attacks the next thing, he knows it's, it's on, he knows, which is part of why he does it the way he does it. It's going to be incredibly fast out of nowhere because he knows that if he's not quick, he's going to get stopped. He can't push anymore. So he makes a deal. Because at this time, somebody says, Hitler, what you doing? Look right here. Joseph Stalin. Remember Stalin? Joseph Stalin in Russia took over after V.I. Lenin. Yeah. <clears throat> Good old Stalin. Worse than Hitler, but whatever. Joseph Stalin, in charge of Russia, knows Hitler's plans. How can he know Hitler's plans? Well, you know, you write a book about it. He goes to Hitler and he's like, bro, what are you doing? Because I'm watching you move east. Yeah, let me put my big old head on this side of the computer. He says, I'm watching you. You took over this to the east. You took over this to the east. You took over this. I know what you want to do. Are you coming to take over us? No. Mr. Stalin, sir. I wrote that book like 15 years ago. Maybe even longer. I don't know. I suck at dates. I don't suck at dates. I suck at math. Um, anyway. I wrote that book in the late 1920s. Like, man, I know I don't have the population to take over Russia. It's cool. But I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. This right here used to be Germany. And there's a lot of Germans living here in this part of Poland. And this up here, Prussia, used to be Germany. And Prussians are Germans. So I'm getting that back. Stalin, you know what? This right here, this part of Poland used to be yours and they took it from you. We should both take Poland at the same time. I can take this side of Poland. You can take this side of Poland. We're good to go. Stalin says, yeah, but then I have to share a border with you and I don't trust you. You know what, Stalin? Let's sign a non-aggression pact. Okay, sometimes you will see this called the, um, what is it? The Nazi-Soviet pact. Um, it's the same thing. If you see it on the AP test and it's the Nazi-Soviet pact, it's the non-aggression pact. Hitler signs it, Stalin signs it. And basically it says, we won't fight each other, ever. Yeah, which one do you distrust more? Hitler, who's going to be responsible for like 12 million deaths, or Stalin, who's going to be responsible for like 32 million deaths? I mean, I don't know. It's a toss-up. Which one do you think is going to break the non-aggression pact? Because one of them does. One of them does. Hmm. They both secretly promise to not fight each other, which is weird because it's a secret. Oh, I didn't tell you this. Hey, guess what? One of the 14 points that Woodrow Wilson had um, in the Treaty of Versailles was no secret alliances. If you have an alliance with somebody, you have the guts to put it out in the open. 
Well, Germany signed that. Russia didn't, but Germany signed that. Now, Hitler didn't sign it. It's the old Weimar Republic that signed it. You're like, but he is part of the Weimar Republic. Ah, uh, no. Mm -mm. What? Check this out. Let me go back up. Did I not put it on here? Maybe I didn't put it on here. If I didn't, I'm surprised. Um, right here, Hitler becomes chancellor, right? So he has a four year um, term. Okay, 33, 34, 34, 35, 35, 36, 36, 37. Yeah, it's time for a new election, 1937. Okay. Do we really need to have a vote? I mean, don't you Germans trust me? Haven't I fixed the economy the way that I said I would? We did. He created jobs by creating a military. He created jobs by building prisons. Um, he absolutely created jobs. D don't you guys trust me? Do we really need to worry about this? I mean, we're in the middle of the Great Depression. Why don't I just stay on? No election takes place. The first four years, Hitler is legally-ish put into power. Um, I say that because, yeah, he kills all the people in the Night of the Long Knives, okay? But he's appointed to chancellor. And then he spends the next, or those first four years doing what he promised to fix the economy. Well, it's time for a new election. And there is no election. He takes power. And that's when the aggression starts. So, hmm, I wonder if the timing was on purpose. The Russians and the Germans signed the non-aggression pact. We will not ever fight each other. Gonna both attack Poland at the same time. What's next? World War II. And that'll be next. Auf Wiedersehen. Bye. See you later.